In this video, the setting is an oral examination on cultural history. But don't worry if you don't know the subject, focus instead on the dynamics. The vignette you are about to see enters near the end of the examination and the student has been giving poor answers for a while. The first answers that you will see the student give are either incorrect or superficial, but the final answer is very good. As you watch this, think about what effect this might have on the examiner. Okay, now I want to talk with you about the Renaissance period and its role in visual art, politics, music, philosophy, and religion. Tell me what you know about this period. The Renaissance was the period after the Middle Ages, so it began around 1600. It was a time where all the artists wanted to go back to the basics of art because scholars were bringing back classical Greek literary texts and knowledge about Greek art. It was basically a response to the exaggerated ornamentations of the previous period. And can you tell me the name of an artist whose work exemplifies this period? Rembrandt. And what's so Greek about him? Well, he painted lots of Old Testament paintings. And what's so Greek about them? Uh, no, not him. Okay, can you please tell me an artist whose work exemplifies this period? Leonardo da Vinci. And how does his work exemplify the period? Well, because he was so broadly educated. He was not only a painter, but also a sculptor and a scientist. That's why they call him a Renaissance man. And what does this tell us about the Renaissance period? Well, if you look at the art more specifically, I guess it's the whole movement towards more realism in painting. Um, wasn't the Renaissance also the period in which perspective was discovered? Linear perspective? Yes. What can you tell me about developments in the religious area during this period? Well, probably the most interesting part of it is the interrelationship between religion and the philosophical developments at that time. There are numerous reasons why this could have happened after such a long period of religious stability. One suggestion made by historians is the role of the plague. There were so many victims of the plague that people stopped focusing on what happened after they died and started focusing on living. That may be a contributing factor, but it doesn't really explain why the Renaissance occurred in Italy and not, for example, in England. On the other hand, cities like Florence were hit quite hard by the plague. Another factor which I think is more important is the role of the Medici family as patrons of the arts, thereby bringing more scholars and artists into Florence. They typically had a more humanistic view on life than the clergy. Another factor which could have played a part is the moral bankruptcy of the church, as exemplified by the lifestyles of the popes at that time. For example, Pope Alexander VI, who fueled these developments further by his nepotism and corruption. In turn, of course, you have the movement of the Counter-Reformation, which brought the church into alignment with the thinking of the Renaissance. Well, this is impressive. You started off slowly, but you finished really well. <laughs> 